On today's Locked On Bama, we're going to have John Garcia, a new addition to the Locked On family, who is with Sports Illustrated, one of the best, if not the best, recruiting expert in the industry, and a buddy of mine, just an all-around good dude. He will be with us today on Locked On Bama, so stay with us and learn something about recruiting. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein. That is not him. That is John Garcia with Sports Illustrated. Hey, first of all, John, welcome to the Locked On family, bro. Yeah, good to be on with you always, Luke. Yeah, yeah you guys do a really great job. I've obviously been on with you before. Know what you can do and, and happy to uh, jump in a little bit more. Well, let's do. Let's jump right in. People like to just jump on in there. The water's fine. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the uh, state of Alabama and some of the guys that are, you know, huge prospects for a, a lot of different teams, but notably Alabama. We'll start at the top with James Smith. This is a guy that was at IMG Academy, I think, for a year, was he not? Now he's back at Carver High School. Um, I've seen some workout video of him. He's an absolute monster. Uh, he seems to be a unanimous five-star. What do you think of him, and where do you think he ends up? Yeah, Luke, just a ferocious talent. I mean, just your modern day interior defensive lineman. He can play the zero, the one, the three. Uh, you can really line him up anywhere on the interior. And he's going to be tough for blockers to occupy because he is massive, well over 300 pounds, extremely strong in the upper body. And like you said, he's developed over the last few months to, to fill out a little bit better proportionally. Um, and his recruitment is reflecting as much the Alabamas, the Georgias, the Clemsons, the Floridas, the Auburns of the world all over James Smith uh, at a Carver High School. And I think it's probably early for him. LSU is trying to throw its hat in the ring. We know Texas A&M recently got him and, and his teammate Quay Rousseau on campus. Uh, I think their pitch in Montgomery is is very clear. They've, they've had some staying power in the state. Damien Craig, obviously an Alabama native and has recruited the state uh, for, for a decade plus at this point. Uh, so it's going to be an SEC heavy battle. I think Clemson can stay in the race uh, for James just because of their recruiting pedigree on the defensive front. Uh, but I usually figure it's going to stay in SEC country. Alabama is going to be in the driver's seat, I think, for the bulk of this recruitment. But I think I mentioned Quay Rousseau. I think he's going to factor in. I think they haven't talked about 100% being a package deal, but four-year Carver High School teammates, as you mentioned, Smith went to IMG, came back to Carver High School. I think Rasal was a big part of that as, as the most talented defensive line in the state, uh, maybe next to Thompson High School lines up this year. I think a lot of people are going to start to pencil the duo as a package deal, although those don't normally pan out, right? I mean, the last Carver High School package deal was supposed to be Marlon Davidson and, and Mac Wilson. And of course, they end up at, at the Iron Bowl rivals with Mac going to Bama and Marlon going to Auburn before uh, they end up in the NFL. You could see similar, in my opinion, with these two. I think Smith is more likely to go the Bama Georgia AM route. I think we saw a little bit more in the Auburn Bama Clemson kind of conversation. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they decide to navigate the recruiting process individually and, and then together. Yeah, you mentioned Russell. I was going to talk about him next. Um, this is a guy that's an absolute beast as well. Uh, man, just prayers and thoughts to uh, anybody who plays Carver this year, right, on the offensive line. But um, I've seen some crystal balls for him to Georgia. Um, look, it's not crazy. I mean, it's no longer crazy to think that. Uh, because Georgia can is like Alabama. They can reach in and grab a five-star from anywhere. But um, do you feel like Georgia's in the mix? I noticed you just left them off the, the trio you named. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think they're in the mix. Um, you know, when I first talked to Quay, it was really, hey, I want these two offers, Alabama and Georgia. And, it, and it's really no surprise for a premier defensive target in, in SEC country to want those two the most. And I believe he got them in, in like back-to-back -back fashion. So – uh, they definitely resonate. I do think, uh, again, are you going to go package deal with James or are you going to go solo? If he goes solo, I think George's chances probably increase 
Um, same thing for Auburn uh, with Rousseau, who is more of an edge prospect. Uh, and, and if it wasn't for Nicholas Harbor up in D.C., everybody would be talking about Quay Rousseau running track at 6'4", 235 pounds, because he's clocking 10 nines and 11 flats at that size, which is just absurd to think about. Uh, that's basically wide receiver DB speed in, in a premier edge rusher who's like bigger than Will Anderson was at the same stage of high school. So like you mentioned, you know, the thoughts are with everybody playing Carver and that battle is wide open. And I think that's the biggest thing, Luke, is that because more options continue to pop in for these guys, it's probably going to extend the process, but you expect Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Texas, A&M, those four to stay in the race about as long as anyone. And then Clemson, Florida, maybe some dark horses uh, for the two. Uh, but again, will they play together or not? Uh, I, I think either way, this recruitment for, for each of them extends you know, well into the summer and most likely the fall. Want to talk some more about some in-state guys here in Alabama right after I tell everybody about betonline.net. That's where the game starts. I talk about it all the time. Betonline.net is the absolute best. Go check them out. Um, you will you will love this website. If you're into gambling of any sort, you're going to love Bet Online. It's the number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NBA playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all the sporting wagering information, from live betting to playoffs. They have casino games. You got everything you want. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, you, you mentioned Clemson, and the one guy that's really tied in with Clemson, it seems like, is Christopher Vizina, who's going to make an announcement. I think it's April 18th. Is that the date I saw? I believe it's Tuesday now. It's, it's oh, is the it 12th. Tuesday? Yeah, he's coming off the board mean, this week. I mean, <laughs> well, as people watch this, this will be yeah. the 12th. I thought it was next Tuesday but or next Monday, but I guess I screwed that up. You're the recruiting guy. I, I just sit here and gammer. <laughs> But, Don't um, quote me on any kind of math problems here. You know, it was calendar <laughs> dates and math. Like, I'm out on that. But it's obviously – it's decision time for Vizina either way. And it's – I mean, world's worst kept secret is going to be Clemson, right? I think so. I mean, one source put it really flatly to me. Uh, Clemson has offered two quarterbacks in this class, Arch Manning, Chris Vizina. And the source said, hey, Arch ain't coming. So, I mean, it's basically telling me without telling me that Clemson's in the driver's seat for Vizina, but everyone has has sort of jumped into this race over the last six months, Ohio State, Georgia, Ole Miss, Auburn, uh, and each of them have gotten them on campus as well. I think that's what makes it kind of interesting for Vizina, but if you track the visits, it's Clemson and Ole Miss with three visits each, but this past weekend, back in Clemson for the spring game, all in on one quarterback recruit, and, and of that group, Luke, Clemson's the only school that's all in on one recruit. You know, Ole Miss, Georgia, uh, they're in on the Arch Manning sweepstakes. You know, Notre Dame, Ohio State, they're in it for Dante Moore, who's the best in the Midwest. Um, and, and then Auburn is, is kind of later to the party with Vizina. So even just by that metric, uh, I think the Clemson Tigers should feel really good about Vizina. It's almost boom or bust. Like, they have to get him as their quarterback recruit because there really is no other option at this point. And Clemson has the power to – offer another kid later in the process and, and probably grab one, but maybe not at the caliber of a Chris Bazin, an Arch Manning, the, the top five, six quarterbacks in the country. So I do think this is another the state of Alabama recruit who's, who's going to head uh, to the ACC power, which is something we see a couple times every single cycle. And last year, Clemson finished with a couple of, of Alabamians in, the, in that class. So it's the tradition there, I guess, just rolls on. Well, you know, you got Debo Sweeney, an Alabama guy, and he knows the, the quality of football in the state, and he appreciates it. And I think it means a lot. And, look, I, Jimmy Stein and I have been saying this all along. I, Arch Manning's a, a badass. I mean, he's a unicorn. Um, the, and, and Eli Holstein is up there. I mean, I think Holstein and Arch Manning, there's not a huge difference between those two. I think they're I two incredible quarterbacks. I guess I'm – you know, being with the AHSA radio network, being an Alabama guy, being, um, you know, born and raised in Alexander City, I sort of have an affinity for the local guys. And while and far be it from me to ever criticize anything Nick Saban does, and I'm not criticizing this, I just hope now Alabama gets either Holstein or Arch Manning. And because if they miss on those two and then miss on Bazina, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a big swing and a miss. Um, again, Alabama will be fine. I'm not worried about that. 
But uh, I just – I really like Chris Vizina, and I think he's going to go to Clemson and really ball. I agree with you, Luke. Uh, Bama's been the curious one in this conversation with Chris. I mean, they, they haven't even offered him a scholarship. Like you mentioned, they've been all in on Arch for, for quite some time. Eli Holstein visited, then decommitted from Texas A&M, so they're certainly in good position there. I think he was back on campus even after that decommitment. So there is a nice pecking order for Bama, but – in the world of quarterback recruiting, uh, you can never be too safe. Uh, so not offering a Birmingham kid that has power five caliber is going to be interesting. You know, we've seen a lot of Alabama, state of Alabama quarterbacks end up elsewhere. Bama certainly recruits nationally. Uh, but Vizina of the last few years may be the best of that bunch. You know, 6'4", athletic, big arm, a good runner as well. Just that modern quarterback, smart kid on, on top of it all. So... Like you said, it'll be interesting to compare whoever the 23 quarterback is for Alabama to Vizina going forward. Uh, and Saban won't do it, but we certainly will uh, on our side. You know, and does it say something about quarterback recruiting um, and, and the state of it and, and really how the rich are continuously getting richer? Because I, I look at – let's just use Clemson and Alabama, for example. Clemson has – is it Cade Klubnick, I think it is? They have yep. DJ Uangalele. Um uh, DJ would have an, at least one more year after this year if he wanted it, right? I mean, he's, he's right. I think he's only going to be a junior. Um, then you have Cade Klubnick, who is a, uh, a true freshman coming in. He looked really good in the spring game, apparently. And yet they're probably still going to get a Christopher Bazina uh, at a time when kids love to play immediately. But uh, it, And then you look at Alabama. They've got, obviously, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner in Bryce Young. They've got Jalen Milrow, who's getting rave reviews. And then you bring in a five-star in Ty Simpson, who's fantastic, yet they have a good shot to either Eli Holstein or Arch Manning, arguably the two top quarterbacks in this class. It, it, it tells me a couple of things. First of all, kids aren't scared of competition. And secondly, um, the – they don't care. It doesn't. The depth charts don't matter anymore. If they feel like they can go somewhere to win, you know, if, if that's where they want to go. They don't want to necessarily go to Purdue. No offense to Purdue, and say, "Hey, you know, I, I can really, you know, get this thing rolling." I think they'd rather go to an already established program that has five-star offensive linemen, that has five-star receivers, five-star running backs, that also make them look even better than they already are. Yeah, it's, it's about the total package. And look, these these are quarterbacks. They're the smartest guys in the room. They know about the transfer portal. They know how fluid it is and how much these things change. So conversely, the coaching staff say, hey, I want to stack this thing as, as heavy as I can because even if I lose a guy or two, I want that next person up to be ready to go, at least from a talent standpoint. I mean, just look at the teams you mentioned, Alabama, Clemson, Georgia has certainly gone through it for, for the last half decade. Ohio State, I mean, Joe Burrow transfers and, and wins a Heisman two years later. I mean, this is the new normal at that position. You have to come in ready to compete. Uh, but from the coaching perspective, you have to bring in guys every single year because you just don't know what that attrition will look like, especially when you revert to a younger recruit. We saw it when Alabama started Jalen Hurts. We saw it again with Tua. We're seeing it again with, with Bryce Young. It creates attrition at these powerful programs, uh, and that means the cycle resets thereafter with that quarterback room. So depending on how a guy like Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson handles it, you know, it could open the door for play, competition a little bit sooner for whoever the 2023 guy is. You know, you just never know how quickly – things can change. And, and that's something that only those very, very elite programs are dealing with kind of a, an embarrassment of riches or, or, you know, rich people problems, as they say. <laughs> uh, talking with John Garcia, Sports Illustrated. In this last segment, I want to talk about some of the guys um, who maybe don't get quite as much love as they should. Yeah. We'll start with Tamari and Parker. This is a guy that, boy, I, that's probably misleading when I talk about guys that don't get as much love as they should and you bring in Tamari and Parker because I think that dude's getting pl plenty of love. But if you look at some of the sites, he's listed as what, uh, you know, the number nine, number 10 uh, prospect in the state, and he is a certified badass. <laughs> so tell, talk about him and where you think he ends up. He's going to be fascinating. You know, this is, you know, first of all, it's an indication on how strong – the class of 23 is in the state of Alabama. I know that was your whole focus, Luke, but this state is loaded. And, and on defense in particular, this is kind of the year. Like if you need a great SEC kind of defensive prospect, 
come to Alabama because there's there's prospects at every single level, but especially up front. So I think James Smith and, and Rousseau and, and Peter Woods over at Thompson overshadow to Marion Parker just a little bit, but he can absolutely hold his own. You know, he recently cut his list of schools, I think, to, to just a handful still in the mix for him. And, and it's sort of the usual suspect, but, um, you know, it's anyone's guess. You know, I was on the phone over the weekend with a source who felt good about one school, and this morning I'm hearing uh, about another. Um, Alabama is going to stay in the mix for all of these guys, and I think that's where it gets really interesting, right? It, it's not as dramatic as the quarterback dominoes, but certainly – if they're edge prospects that are similar, how many do you take from the same state and from the same area when you recruit so nationally like Alabama does? And that's what enables other programs like a Clemson, like like a Texas A&M or Georgia to come into the state and pick up, you know, borderline star recruits uh, because there's only so many spots that the Crimson Tide uh, can occupy. And as the depth in the state, you know, grows, now, all of a sudden, that can happen more and more. And this 23 class will be, you know, if you did a scorecard, Luke, of, of the elite recruits and where they end up in this class, it's going to be all over the place. You know, Alabama, Auburn will certainly get their share, but so will Georgia, Clemson. I do think Texas A&M's momentum from last cycle is carrying over. They just had Tony Mitchell on campus, and everything seems to be momentous there. You know, they're going to factor into the state of Alabama as well. And this is just, again, another indication of how talented the state is. But but Tamarian Parker can play absolutely anywhere. He won't sit long, and he's got that that body, you know, 6'3", 6'4", maybe 255, where he can either add weight and, and put his hand in the dirt permanently or stay relatively trim and rush the passer and just be a menace coming from the weak side, kind of like we talk about with Quay Rousseau. So it's an embarrassment of riches at the top of the state, and and Tamarian Parker will be one of the elites, I think, all the way through the cycle. I think I lost you, Luke. No, you didn't lose me, but I, I do, like I always do, I'm mute myself so i can listen to you and people can hear you without any background noise and then i screwed it up and i don't know how to edit it so people who watch this know that sometimes <laughs> luke does that <clears throat> what i was going to say was um yeah i've i'm you know been involved with recruiting in the state of alabama for a long time i've never seen 22 four or five star guys and i think there could end up being you know somebody like a dallas young who's already committed to Arkansas. This is a cornerback out of Gardendale. I mean, he could easily become a four-star. I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, is it Raquizzi McKeldry? Is that how you say it? Yeah, that's how I say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I, say McKeldry, yeah. Yeah, McKeldry. <laughs> I, I think he will easily be a four-star by the time everything is said and done. So, I, I mean, I, the state could end up with 28 four- and five-star dudes. And that's incredible. Those are Florida-like numbers uh, here in the right. state of Alabama. So, um, it's pretty awesome. I want to ask you about one more guy because I, I find um, the, the pipeline. Keep, keep an eye on McKeldry, by the way. I, I do yeah. think Bama's very much in position to potentially flip him from Georgia. That'll be fun all the way through. We could get multiple commitments from, from him. He's just a nasty offensive lineman. But, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and um, I think he will get the uh, patented Bama bump when that is to happen. But, you know, again, <laughs> I, as I say about the Bama bump, um, They've been pretty correct most of the time. I mean, you know, so if Nick Saban likes you, there's a good chance you'll get a star at it. Uh, Carmelo English, because of the pipeline from Central Phoenix City to Clemson, um, is interesting. Do you think he stays in state? Do you think like, I know Clemson's after him too? I think he's one of these must-get guys for Auburn. Uh, like you said, Clemson has has been after him, and and they've got this pipeline of central receivers: Justin Ross, EJ Williams, who, who will be, I believe, their number one guy. Uh, here this year, um, and and English fits that mold, 6'2", 6'3", 185 pounds, just kind of looks like what we talk about in the industry. He looks like a Clemson uh, receiver. He just dropped his top five. Auburn's still in the hunt there. I, I mean, again, how many of these kids can stay in state, you know, and, and for, for across the state and, and, and the Iron Bowl rivalry, because we know, you know, we know Bama fans keep an eye on a little brother there. Um, you know, Auburn has some must-get guys in the region. Auburn High, Central Phoenix City High School, even down to Montgomery, that triangle, they have to win that triangle in recruiting. So we talk about the Carver guys, we talk about the Central guys, they've got to win those battles. And I don't know 
how strong the perception is right now with, with Brian Harson and Auburn. So I, I do think a school like Clemson can come in and, and swipe a Carmelo English. Now, it should be noted that it's not the same coaching staff at Central Phoenix City. The relationships are different. Um, and Clemson has undergone uh, some changes with some of their offensive assistants. So it's not the same type uh, of pull that, that maybe existed with Justin Ross when he made at the time one of the, the bigger shocking you know decisions from the state of Alabama. So I don't think it's a penciled in kind of deal like maybe EJ Williams felt like, but I do think Clemson will factor in and you start to pick up other kids in the area like a quarterback in, in Chris Zena. And now it just makes more sense. They play seven on seven together. I mean, it just becomes a, a bit of a snowball effect when you get that quarterback verbally committed. So I, I do think Clemson is going to continue to splash in, in the state of Alabama. Guys, John Garcia joined us today. And if you have any specific players you want me to ask about, I'm going to try and have him on once a week now. He's a part of the Locked On family. And he's going to be a busy man because everybody is going to be talking to him, trying to get all the information. And um, so when he comes on with us, if you have a specific player you want me to ask about, be happy to do it. John, appreciate your time, buddy. You're, you're the best. Always a pleasure, Luke. Thanks for having me back on. That was John Garcia with Sports Illustrated. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow with more Roll Tide.